Hello guys! Today I wanted to show you how to create perfect skin tones in DaVinci Resolve 18. We'll take a closer look at the vector scope and I will explain how to read it. And as an example, we'll be turning this shot into this one. And I am not sure if you are aware, but I am also in the process of creating a color grading course for the beginners. So if you are interested, sign up to my mailing list. I will leave you a link to it below this video. But for now, let's go to the tutorial. And I'm in the color tab, and this is our clip. It's been shot with Lumix in VLOG, so we'll be converting it to Rec. 709 in a second. And let me minimize the view as I'm working on the laptop today. And here I've already created the node structure, so I'll walk you through it. We'll start from balancing the shot, then we'll add some contrast, then we'll be creating our look. After that, I've got two layer nodes, and the node below is our skin, and the node on the top of it is for the background adjustments. And then at the very end, we'll be applying color space transform. So let's click on that node and let's go here to the effects. Then let's search for the color space transform and let's drop it onto our node. And I know that my input color space is Panasonic V Gamut. Then my input gamma is Panasonic V Log. And I'll leave the output color space and gamma as it is, as the project is already set to Rec. 709. And this is how the clip looks before and after the conversion. Looks very good already, and the balance is not bad at all. But before working on the skin tones, I like to neutralize the colors perfectly to get a nice foundation for the color grading. And now I can see that the shot is a little bit too warm, so I will balance it a bit. And this is where we'll also take a first look at the vector scope. You can open it down here. You can choose from different scopes here. But today, we are focusing only on the vector scope. And in order to balance the shot, this trace should be perfectly in the middle. This is the rule. So let me close that view and let's click on the balance node. Then let's enhance the view again and let's use the offset to balance the shot. We'll be looking at the vector scope while doing this. So I will move my offset towards teal color just a touch like this. And this is before and after. Our clip looks white balanced properly. Now we can move to the next node where I'll be adjusting the contrast and I'll use the custom curve to do it. And I'll create that characteristic S shape, adding just a tiny bit of contrast to the clip. Like this. It really doesn't need much. And again, before and after. Now let's click on the look node. And although I like that blue silverish look now, I want to add more teal to it, to the whole clip. So I'll go to my primary wheels and I'll add a bit of teal using my gamma wheel. Something like this will work before and after. I love it. But also by doing this, we've added some green tones to the skin. So now we will start bringing the skin tones back to the point where they should be. And I will show you how to do it and how to measure it using our vector scope. So let's go back and let's click on the skin node. And the way layer nodes work is that this node below takes a priority over the node above it, which means that if we isolate the skin here and then we'll be adding some adjustments on the adjustments nodes above it, those adjustments won't affect our skin tones. I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, you'll see how it works in a second. So let's enhance the view again and let's go to the qualifier. Then let's highlight the skin. Let's turn the highlight on here to be able to see what we're doing. And we have to improve this selection. So I'll start from the hue slider and I'll bring it closer to clean the selection. Then the luminance. And let's just play it with these sliders until we are happy. Then I will denoise the selection. And let's just play through the clip to see how it looks. Not bad at all. Then let's turn off the highlight and let's move to the vector scope. So a very helpful thing to do is to go here and to turn on show skin indicator. 
which is this white line that show us where the skin tones should be placed in the vector scope. And the vector scope will show us the amount of hue and saturation in the skin. So the further the trace extends from the center of the vector scope, the more saturation the skin has. The saturation depends on the complexion of the skin and there are some rules to it. For pale skin tones, the trace should extend between 20 and 30% and for medium and dark skin tones, from around 25 to 50%. And in terms of the hue, the trace should lay on the skin indicator line or a bit above it. These are the general rules and at the end, the best way of working on the skin is to rely on your own judgment but it's good to be aware of it and it can be really helpful to make this judgment. So let's move into practice. Let's go to the primary wheels and we'll be using the gamma wheel to improve the skin tones. So I will move it towards yellow and I'll add some warmer tones back to the skin and to add more saturation as well. And by doing this, you can see how the trace expands on the vector scope. Then we can go to our curves and then hue versus saturation curve. Then we can sample the skin using the qualifier and this way we'll get the right point on the curve to manipulate colors. And then by moving this point down, we'll take out a bit of the saturation and by moving it up, we'll be adding it back. I will move it down just a bit as I don't like that oversaturated look. And this is before and after. I like it, looks nice and warm. So let's go back to our node tree. And now I will show you what's happening in case we want to add some adjustments on the adjustments node. So let's click on it. Let's go back and let's go to the primary wheels again. And here, when we move it around, changing colors, we can see that the skin remains untouched. Let's go a bit crazy here so you can see better how it works. Okay, but let's reset it and I'm going to add a nice teal tint, just like this. Okay, and now let's just see the final result full screen. Thanks so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.